Hello, are you studying for the Praxis Elementary Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga with study.com, and I'm going to help walk you through some physical science sample problems in this video. Let's get started. Problem 1. If a coin and two balls of different weights are dropped simultaneously from a height of 10 meters in a vacuum, which of the following will be true? A. The heavier ball will hit the ground first. B. The coin will hit the ground first. C. The lighter ball will hit the ground first. Or D. The coin and the two balls will all hit the ground at the same time. So looking back at the problem, there's two points of emphasis. All of these objects are being dropped at the same time from the same height and they're being dropped in a vacuum. And so what that means in science is in a vacuum, there's literally nothing there. So in this case, we've even sucked out all of the air. And so in this context, when we are dropping these objects in a vacuum, there is no air resistance. And it turns out that air resistance is what is really what's causing objects kind of in the real world context to fall at different rates. But if we take away that air resistance, when an object is dropped, the only force acting on it is gravity, and gravity acts the same on all forces. And therefore, the correct answer to this question is answer D. The coin and the two balls are all going to hit the ground at the same time. Question 2. Which of the following statements correctly distinguishes the difference between weight and mass? A. Weight is a measure of the amount of matter in an object, while mass is a measure of the gravitational pull on the object. B. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in an object, while weight is a measure of the gravitational pull on that object. C. Weight and mass both refer to the amount of matter in an object. Or D. Weight and mass both refer to the gravitational pull on an object. All right, so looking at this question, I'm automatically canceling out options C and D because what C and D is basically saying is that weight and mass are the exact same thing. They have the exact same definition and that is not true. Weight and mass are two different vocab terms and they're going to have different definitions and therefore the correct answer choice is going to be letter B. Mass is telling us how much matter is an object where weight is the measure of the gravitational pull on that object. And we can kind of think through that a little bit. You know, here on Earth, when we are getting our weight measured, it's our downward force on the surface. And that, is, that downward force is being caused by gravity. And then if we think, you know, of astronauts in outer space, astronauts in outer space can be floating around. They can be weightless. And the reason why they can be weightless is because they have distanced themselves from Earth's gravitational pull. So if there's no gravity, there's going to be no weight. And we say that those astronauts, even though they have different weights from being on Earth and being in outer space, they have the same amount of mass. They're still made up of the same amount of particles uh, as they are on Earth versus in outer space. So B was the correct answer. Question three, when a light beam strikes a flat mirror at an angle, the light beam will A, bounce back along the same path it came, B, absorb into the mirror, C, reflect off the mirror at the same angle to the normal as it hit, or D, pass through the mirror. Well, the correct answer for this is going to be answer choice C. And this is something known as the law of reflection. And so if we were to draw a flat mirror, what this is saying is if, if a light beam comes in at an angle to that flat mirror, it's going to leave at the exact same angle. And when it says angle to the normal in the option choice, what that normal is talking about is something called the normal line. And the normal line is something that it's, it's, a, it's a point of reference that doesn't exist but it's something that we put as a, as a way to measure the angle at which the light bounces off the mirror. So we would call this theta i, the angle of incidence. And the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is going to equal the angle of reflection. So theta i equals theta r. They're going to be the exact same angle. And we see that happen 
in nature. Finally, question four, how does a compass work to determine direction? A, it uses the Earth's magnetic field to point towards the north. B, it uses the Earth's gravitational pull to point towards the south. C, it uses the sun's position to point towards the east. Or D, it uses the moon's position to point towards the west. Looking at these option choices, I can automatically uh, eliminate options C and D. And the reason why we can do that is because from our perspective on Earth, the sun or the moon are constantly changing. So the compass isn't going to position itself to you know, a sun or a moon that is, from our perspective, uh, constantly in orbit. So C and D are not the correct answer. We can eliminate option B as well. Earth's gravitational pull is going to point it south. Well, that's incorrect because gravity pulls us downwards, if anything, and downwards really is pointed towards the center or the inner core of Earth itself. And so that's not necessarily south. So the correct answer here is option A. Earth does have a magnetic field, um, and the compass aligns itself with that magnetic field. Um, you may have heard of, you know, Earth has a North Pole and a South Pole, and those poles are like mag the Earth's magnetic poles. And that is how the compass aligns itself to always point towards the North. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis Test Prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we wanna hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.